Hi, good afternoon, good evening, whatever. This is Mr. Burns. We are going to take a look at the 1850s, and today's lesson is we're going to be delving into the Kansas Nebraska Act. So, there you see a picture on the left of the Nebraska Territory. It's a big chunk of land that was part of the Louisiana Purchase. And in the 1850s, there was a certain politician who wanted to see some of that land settled. And the reason he wanted to see some of that land settled is so that Chicago could be the jumping off place for the Transcontinental Railroad. So the politician was Stephen A. Douglas. Let me grab a pencil there. He wanted to see the interior settled so that Chicago could be the jumping off point of the uh, Transcontinental Railroad. There were other cities that were also in competition for this. You might think of New Orleans or St. Louis or even Memphis. So uh, the, the critical thing was to get settlers out, out there. Douglas, I'll circle his name, was from Chicago. And Chicago is in Illinois. So he wants to make this uh, happen. And he thinks that if he does things perfectly, and the Kansas-Nebraska Act is a big success, that this is going to be one of the things that propels him into the office of the presidency. So he definitely had presidential ambitions. So here is the Nebraska Territory, there's the Kansas Territory. If you want to become the President of the United States, you need to get support from all parts of the country. The way Douglas was going to get support from all parts of the country was through his Kansas-Nebraska Act. He was in particularly looking to get southern support. After all, Illinois is a northern state, so he needed some support in some of the southern states if that was going to get himself into the presidential office, the White House. So, he wrote this law, and it was called the Kansas-Nebraska Act, and what it did was it split Nebraska into two territories. The Northern Territory was Nebraska and the Southern Territory was Kansas. Now, one of the things you need to think about here is that the uh, Kansas Territory is north of the Missouri Compromise Line. And I think I'm gonna pause my video here to uh, display a graphic. So here we go, I got my graphic up there. Uh, you can see the state of Missouri right there. And you can kind of see a little bitty line. I'll try to trace it in green. And I didn't do a really good job of tracing that line. But that line extended across the rest of the Louisiana Purchase Territory. And by the Compromise of 1820, it said that slavery could not exist north of that line. Missouri was the exception in the territories that were gained from the Louisiana Purchase. So Douglas had to come up with a work around this. And what he did was he said, both of these territories are going to be open to slavery. He thinks that's going to make the Southerners happy because he thinks that uh, perhaps Southerners will head into Kansas and Kansas could become a slave state. And Nebraska is probably going to make the North happy because for sure that's going to become a, a, a free state. And then to further kind of complicate things, he comes up with this idea which has been kicked around before of popular sovereignty. So that when the Kansas Territory or when the Nebraska Territory did indeed apply for statehood, it would be up to the citizens of those territories to vote on whether they were going to come in as a free state or a slave state. All right, so here we go. Politicians do not always get things right. Uh, Stephen A. Douglas thought he was throwing a bone to the southern states, and he also thought he was throwing a bone to the northern states, and that both sides would be happy. The northern states were, would get a free state. The southern states would get uh, another slave territory or another slave state. But the country unbeknownst to Douglas, had become so divided on this issue of slavery that uh, trouble is going to break out in Nebraska. So his thought was that Nebraska would be free and Kansas would be a slave state. 
What happened on the ground, though, is more like what you see in this picture with armed men pointing guns at each other. And uh, what happened in Kansas was that uh, uh, basically starting about 1856, a mini civil war broke out in that state between pro-slavery forces and anti-slavery forces. Um, this kind of destroyed Stephen A. Douglas's hopes of uh, becoming president. And it was also another blow to the Missouri Compromise because it allowed slavery to go north of the Missouri Compromise line. And it also showed how badly the country was fracturing over this issue of slavery. That uh, we're getting really close to the point where you can't talk through this problem. So, this is the Kansas-Nebraska lesson. Uh, I want you to remember the name Stephen A. Douglas because he was the senator from Illinois and the Kansas-Nebraska Act was his idea. This idea was a complete failure and it brought the nation one step closer to civil war.